Hey there gamers! After the smashing success of my first video, and the skyrocketing number of views on the following one, I just couldn't wait to make a new video to bathe in the praise and glory of my loyal following comments about how goddamn awesome I am and how they are craving more videos. So naturally, it took me almost a month to make this follow-up video. After making a more of a laid-back casual game even a normie could play, I wanted to give something to all my hardcore gamers out there. A game that only a true gamer could finish. So I plugged in my brain, increased the IQ button to over 9000 and started brainstorming. Nah, not this one. Not that one either. Ah, that's a stupid idea. Ugh, that's gross. Hmm, maybe that one? There it is. I finally had it. The idea of a lifetime. The perfect combination of my high intellect and mature humor merged together to form the perfect hardcore game for all the gamers and gamers to rage quit over over and over again. Get ready. Here it comes. An obese man eating beans and using the bean fuel to fart his way to more food. Glorious. I knew this idea was going to catch more than just one eye, so I started prototyping right away. And once I had a prototype ready, I went to the only person who tolerates me on a daily basis to ask what she thinks about the game. The person was none other than my hobbit girlfriend. Unfortunately, she said my idea was... No, no, no! This is immature and offensive idea. No one wants to play it. And now, what about the second breakfast? I thought her points made a lot of sense, and so I stuck to them religiously. What about the second breakfast, indeed? that harsh criticism from the Hobbit, I briefly ventured into a completely different idea with a rocket blasting its enemies in space. So a classical top-down shooter then. But then I decided to rebel against that mighty Hobbit and finish my original game regardless. Even though I did change the visuals a little bit as the idea of a farting man evading vegetables, however hilarious that might be, just looked too demanding on the art side of things. I mean, having to draw so many pieces of vegetables how many different types of vegetables are there anyway? Like six? A cucumber? A pepper? A tomato? Lettuce? Broccoli? And... Cauliflower. That would just take way too long, so I went with a completely different art style. Now, remember in my last video when I said this about my drawing skills? And since my drawing skills are somewhere between what a toddler would draw and what a blind person would draw. Yeah, so naturally I went with a completely hand-drawn art style this time. A total no-brainer here. The idea for the style is that everything will be hand-drawn with just a blue ink pen on white paper, which is what you can see me do here. But then when I scanned it in, the sprites look kinda weird and low quality, and since everything else about this game was going to be low quality too, I thought at least the sprites could look like some effort was put into them. I first wanted to let my hobbit girlfriend do the drawing, as I thought her skills surpassed mine, but then when I saw what she came up with? I decided to cut her out of the project. This meant whipping out the good old XP Pen Star G640 and drawing in Photoshop, which unsurprisingly made things a lot easier because I could now change my level layout dynamically and wasn't stuck with whatever I drew on a paper a couple days prior. Now that I explained everything there is to know about the art style and more, let's take a look at the gameplay. The core idea of the gameplay is that you can take control of a clumsy spaceship, uh, which is really hard to control due to its broken control system, hence the project working title, and you need to take it from one landing pad to the other. To make things slightly harder for you, you need to avoid obstacles on your way there. Since it's already been established that I'm crap at drawing, uh, those obstacles take a form of a simple shade such as the cube, or the rectangle, or the slightly deformed cube, or the Rorschach test. Next, I coded in some physics and movement mechanics so that we can test some of the actual gameplay. And it worked perfectly on the first try. As you can see here, I'm trying to go up and to the right, but the rocket doesn't agree with me and thinks the right way to go is to the left and nowhere in the Y direction. Which proves my AI has outsmarted me and is ready to make some serious cash on the Antwerp website. For the purpose of the game though, it doesn't work as well, so I rewrote 
a couple lines, like one or two, to make it dumber and follow whatever directions the player gives. And now it kind of works. Ta-da! I base the whole win-lose shenanigans on the game object tags. So that whenever you collide with anything that isn't tagged as either friendly or finish, your rocket will get destroyed and you will see this lovely animation. And the current level will get reloaded. If you hit a friendly target, nothing happens, and if you hit a finish target, you will get transported into the next level. This also meant I had to spend like 10 minutes on each level just adding the edge collider on there so that the rocket had some boundaries it couldn't fly out of. Lovely times right here gamers, very enjoyable. After creating the first 5 levels, I thought it would be time to spice things up with a new sort of mechanic. Or a new enemy if you will. So I cut it in a moving obstacle, which uses some kind of a sin to move, which would go well with the original theme of the game, given the sin would be something like gluttony. But in this, I honestly don't know what it really does. Yeah, I found this code online. Basically none of this came from my head, thank you very much. In more simple terms, the scene is here makes sure the movement is smooth rather than abrupt, so that the more the game object approaches its maximum value in whatever axis it's currently moving in, the slower it will approach it, and once it hits it, it will accelerate in the opposite direction again. This makes for a quite a predictable movement pattern, so the player can learn to account for where and how fast the obstacle is going to go next. I made some 5 more levels with this mechanic, at which point I thought a new mechanic to spice things up is in order. And so I added a fader code, which takes a sprite and fades it out, leaving the collider in place, which I used to fade out the whole lever over the period of like 10 seconds, making you either have to be fast as fuck, boy, or have a good memory of where the obstacles were. For later levels, I also added a fade back in mechanic, so that you will get distracted by the flickering moving panels. And then I took the mechanic way too far for the last two levels, because I was tired of designing them and just added a bunch of invisible obstacles so that the player has to bump into them first and then remember where they were in order to avoid them. There aren't too many of them though and they are quite far apart from each other so the level is not as challenging. Then I put together a main menu with a tutorial on how to play the game in the background, some settings in the form of a on-off music button and a big-ass promotion button that will take you straight to my glorious YouTube channel, as well as a thank you page for anyone who made it to the end of the 16 levels as sort of a reward. I also made a page for choosing levels with locked levels, which actually was super easy to go in because you just need to use player prefs, which I already had some experience with from my last game for storing high scores. Once I added sprites to all of these, it was time to start working on some music. This part was particularly easy because I just stole everything from a bunch of public domain databases and added it to the game. No effort needed, 10 out of 10 way to get sounds without making people's ears bleed like I did last time. A little easter egg here, if you press the N button on your keyboard, the game will skip to the next song. And voila! Now when you thrust, you hear a thrusting sound. When you crash, it plays an explosion sound. When you win, it gives you a little... All while listening to some great music playing in the background. Last thing left to do is create button controls for mobile devices, because I don't know if I told you this, but I like to make my crappy games available for Android devices. This took its sweet time though, because I couldn't get to the bottom of repeated action on button hold. Luckily Stack Overflow exists and so eventually I made it work. Just be warned, if you want to play this on a mobile phone, it's even harder than with a keyboard, so there is a slight risk of throwing your phone at a wall. Last things last, I exported the project, gave it an acceptable name, sent it to some playtesters, really just a bunch of my friends who were kind enough to give me feedback on this, who said it's brilliant and doesn't need a single change made to it. 
so I submitted it both to HIO and Google Play Store for all you true gamers out there to enjoy. And that's it! This concludes part one of the Paper Space Pilot journey. Based on the feedback I got from everyone who played it, I think I'll make a part two where I'm going to implement some new features and mechanics to the game, as well as some new levels to keep it fresh, yo. So definitely go so you don't miss that sweet, sweet coding time. Till the next time, thanks for watching.